Again, this is Dr. Salil Kandwala from uh, Advanced Urogynecology of Michigan. We'll now be talking about how common are these pelvic floor conditions. We talked about the conditions already. Now let's see how common these conditions are. Urine leakage affects 62% of women. Basically, two out of three women suffer from urinary leakage. And it is more in women over the age of 70 who are obese, BMI greater than 40, and who have had a vaginal delivery. Pelvic organ prolapse, which is the vaginal bulge, affects 40% of women, that means four out of 10 women, and one in 10 will undergo surgery for prolapse in their lifetime. The likelihood of reoperation for prolapse is as high as one in six. That means she's had a surgery done and now she has to have it again. From the bowel leakage standpoint, it affects one in 10 women. If you consider gas leakage also, which is quite a problem, you know, when a, if, if someone's just walking around and just losing gas and, and uh, uh, passing without uh, control, that's an embarrassing issue. And that is as high as almost 40%. So four out of 10 women will have bowel leakage. The risk factors for these are vaginal delivery, especially if there is tear to the anal sphincter, high BMI, so obese, irritable bowel syndrome, and constipation. 75% of women with bowel leakage have a very poor quality of life, and sadly, very few still seek treatment. From the constipation standpoint, one in six people have constipation. Women are more affected than men, and one in three elderly women complain of bothersome constipation. From the point of view of genital urinary syndrome of menopause, which is the vaginal atrophy condition that we just talked about, it affects more than 50% of all postmenopausal women. So of course, postmenopausal, that means the vaginal estrogen is going down, but not all women get the changes in the vagina. 50% will get that. It affects both the woman and her male partner during intercourse because of the vaginal dryness. And not only the physical well-being, but also the mental well-being, and it negatively impacts the patient's self-esteem and her marital relationship. The U.S. Viva study showed that almost 50% of women with symptoms of GSM did not consult a healthcare provider. That means they kept suffering and did not talk about it. So the bottom line, as you can see, these pelvic floor conditions are very, very common. And they're just not there. They affect the woman's quality of life. That means she is avoiding doing certain things because of these pelvic floor conditions. She cannot essentially live a normal life that she desires to live. That's what it means. One in two women have this issue. Though some conditions worsen with age, most conditions can happen at any age. And what my impression is that the reason why I see patients a little later on in life is because they're fed up of waiting and they were unaware, as we'll talk about why in a second. So they wait at least, this is the sad fact, they wait at least five to 10 years, at least before seeking treatment, after the problem becomes bothersome. Not that it's just there and it's okay. It is bothersome to me. And still I wait five to 10 years before I go to a doctor. Women feel that wearing pads is the only solution. They have get no or misinformation even from their doctors. Women get misinformation from the media and media propagates the concept of embarrassment and say, yeah, just don't talk about it. Why don't you just wear pads so that we can make money as a company? Women feel that this is part of getting old and it's so far from the truth. Women feel that there is no treatment available for these conditions and they have to wear a pad. Why? Why is it that they suffer? What is the main reason? It is lack of awareness of what can be done. Doctors, myself, I mean, I know, but I don't tell my colleagues and my colleague doctors do not address this, these issues at their patients' physicals. You know, coming for routine pap smear or just annual physical, they don't address it. Do not know, the doctors themselves do not know the new advances. They still talk about words like bladder suspension when I haven't done a bladder suspension for 20 years now. Or they talked about, hey, just do some Kegel exercises. This is unmonitored, unregulated. You don't really know what she is doing. They simply do not recommend anything. They'll just say, you know what? Why don't you wait until it gets bad? Then come and find me. Why? You want? Just, I'll talk to you later. 
They just don't give any information. Patients are made to see and hear all the wrong information, ads on pads, because these companies make billions on pads. So great pad ads are out there. Misinformation about sling and mesh in the media. It's misinformation. And even doctors will tell their patients, why do you want to undergo surgery with all its complications? When there's so much has changed over the past decade, not last year, decade, still there is ignorance amongst not only you know, healthcare providers, but some staff members even at the hospital. What are the true facts? All pelvic floor conditions, remember, all, all what I talked about, these pelvic floor conditions can be treated. Most of these conditions can be completely cured or at least improved to the point of your satisfaction. And it is a medical condition, these things. They are not just a cosmetic things. They're all similar to high blood pressure and diabetes. It's not that something you did that you have to be guilty about. Just because you had a baby and a child, that doesn't mean that you have to be feeling bad about it, you know? There's no reason for embarrassment. It is a medical condition and the procedures are not cosmetic. They're covered by insurance like any other medical procedure. Most of these conditions now, not only can they be managed, but they can be managed in my office. That's what I do. I seldom go to the hospital. Pads are almost never to be worn. In fact, pads are bad because they weaken your muscles. Most of my patients remain cured and satisfied with their outcomes. And even if I go to the hospital, it is either done in an outpatient center or they may stay overnight for a large prolapse case and go home the next morning. Most patients can return to all normal activities the very next day. I mean, think about it. All normal activities the very next day. Results are instant, either the same day or within a few days. And most procedures are done under local anesthesia or slight light sedation. The cost, when you look at the overall cost of treatment, is usually less than the ongoing cost of pads that you are basically paying from your pocket. And the complications of these procedures are minimal to none in my hands. And remember, some of these disease conditions, like a large prolapse, can by itself cause complications, and its treatment complications are far lesser than the complication of the existing disease state. So the, what is the most common regret of my patients? They basically say, how come no one, how come no one, including my own doctor, how come no one told me about these treatment choices? I never would have waited this long had I just known. What do we do uniquely in our practice? We do a thorough and a swift diagnosis, one-stop shop, it's all done. We manage our patients based upon evidence that we have established from our own published literature. We perform certain unique procedures that I'll talk about over the next subsequent videos that no one else in the world is doing that is highly successful. And we follow our patients and track their results to help improve their conditions promptly, but also to gather the information to give it to other patients that, hey, we saw 50 women three years out and they are doing great. Uh, what next step is a proper, remember, a proper and a complete history is the beginning of a treatment and helps us because it helps us make the right diagnosis An incomplete history. So if you forget to give me some medication list or allergy list, that can lead to mismanagement and treatment failures, errors in management, and I'll tell you, go over that in a second, and drug interactions. In fact, remember, look at this is the reason why it can lead to treatment failures. 50% of patients who come to see us for one condition, let's say urinary condition, have a second condition, like a bowel leakage condition, that is even more bothersome to, than the urine condition, but they would have never brought it up had it not been for this proper history. So next, I'm gonna to talk to you about the value of taking and set, giving me a proper history forms and the questionnaires. Thank you.